It is indeed the case that the Deputy First Minister is currently unable to attend Parliament for wholly understandable reasons of public health and safety. Um, we are aware, we have had discussions within the Bureau and out with on the, the frustration that members can feel when they are unable to intervene in specific situations. But obviously, in this case, it is a result of a specific set of circumstances. Um, and we'll move on to the, the next item. So, for clarity for members, the debate on the programme for government 2021-22 will continue tomorrow afternoon. And can I remind members that if they've spoken in the debate this afternoon, they must be present in the chamber for closing speeches tomorrow afternoon. We now move on to an urgent question, and I call Alex Cole-Hamilton. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what immediate action it will take in light of the record high waiting times in A&E departments during the last four weeks. Cabinet Secretary Hamza Youssef. The pandemic has brought unprecedented pressure on our NHS, uh, our hospitals uh, and indeed our A&E departments. That's why we've recently invested an additional £12 million, er, 12 million pounds earlier in the summer to support non-COVID emergency care. It's why we also set out our ambitious NHS recovery plan to increase capacity uh, backed by £1 billion of investment. In addition to help address this challenge, we've established a systems response group. It's chaired by NHS Scotland's Chief Operating Officer, John Burns. Uh, this group of health and care professionals are working on the ground to help improve systems and performance. That their work will include re-establishing previous good practice such as hospital discharge and optimising flow through hospitals and creating additional bed capacity. Uh, we have provided an additional £20 million to the Scottish Ambulance Service who are accelerating work with health boards and IGBs to enable more people to be helped by non-emergency department options where that's safe and of course where that's appropriate. Boards are also further boosting staffing levels which are at a record high over the next few weeks to help put measures in place to reduce waiting times for urgent or emergency treatment and increasing available bed capacity. Alex Cole Hamilton. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'm grateful for that reply. I mean, the Cabinet Secretary may reference the pandemic, but this was a problem to which the SNP government was unequal long before anybody had heard of COVID-19. More than a quarter of people attending A&E experience painful waits of more than four hours when they need help the most. In a country that prides itself on its health service, that is utterly depressing. The percentage of people not being seen in time has reached record levels in each of the last four weeks. Health boards are actively warning people to stay away. In the Cabinet Secretary's response, he referred to funding made available three months ago. What will the Scottish Government to do, to, do to make this uh, make changes this week to ensure these people don't have to wait? Cabinet Secretary. I, I will uh, go into some detail in response to Alice Cole Hamilton's question, but listening to Alice Cole Hamilton, you would have no idea that there was ever a pandemic. You would have no idea that the NHS has just suffered and is suffering the biggest shock in its 73 year history. So there are a range of factors that impact A&E performance. To think that we can just look at A&E in isolation is incorrect. We have to look at the whole system of the NHS in order to help alleviate some of the significant pressures. And despite those pressures, and A&E performance is not where I'd like it to be, and understandably so, given what I've just said about the pressures of the pandemic, it's still the best performing A&E department in the entire UK. In terms of what we are doing, that £12 million investment is uh, helping our boards to increase staffing at a local level. It's increasing bed capacity. It's providing additional transport options, for example, to improve flow in and out of hospital. And we expect to see that impact of that uh, in the coming weeks. Uh, but I cannot wave, and I will not uh, ma a magic wand, I will not pretend to the public, I will not treat them like fools and pretend that somehow we can simply wave that magic wand uh, and somehow the effects of the pandemic will suddenly disappear. So it is really incumbent on all of us, particularly a leader of an opposition party, to recognise the seriousness of the challenge. And yes, let's come together with our good suggestions from the opposition. Of course, I will look to implement them. 
Alex Cole-Hamilton. Presiding officer, the Cabinet Secretary is treating the Scottish public like fools. If he expects them to believe that the waits in A&E are caused solely by the pandemic. We know that they are caused by an interruption in flow throughout the health service, caused by a paucity of social care to receive people from hospital inpatient beds. And the ripple effects are catastrophic. Ambulance waiting times are off the charts. Waits are excruciatingly long. Two weeks ago, a pensioner in Edinburgh reportedly waited 16 hours for help to arrive. 16 hours. Staff are working tirelessly, but they need more. So in addition to dealing with the waits at A&E, what immediate action will the Cabinet Secretary take to address the pressure on ambulance crews as well? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, Alice Cole Hamilton really needs to make sure he is grounded in reality, because what he is not doing is acknowledging that the, the pressures of the pandemic don't just affect A&E, but he referenced social care. Is he seriously suggesting that social care has not been impacted by the pandemic? Of course it absolutely has, and that's why we're investing in every single part of the uh, uh, NHS. Uh, we are investing £80 million this year uh, in order to address some of the effects of the pandemic. In terms of uh, what we're doing uh, in terms of investment in the ambulance service, we're investing an additional £20 million in the Scottish Ambulance Service because we recognise the pressures the pandemic has played uh, on that part of the system. Uh, they have recruited uh, just recently, in fact, last week in their last recruitment tranche, 60-odd uh, uh, additional NH uh, ambulance staff uh, to help in the north and north east uh, of the country. So, look, we will continue to invest right across the NHS, but if there are real tangible suggestions from the opposition, then he will find that I have an absolute open door uh, to listening and working collaboratively uh, with him or other members of the opposition. But let's not make false promises to the public who are listening. Yes, we will invest. Uh, yes, we will put in the effort in order to tackle backlogs, but of course we also have to be realistic as much as we are ambitious. Sandesh Gulhani. There is record a &E waiting times. There is record ambulance waiting times. There is record waiting lists. There is a serious NHS staffing crisis in Glasgow, leading to all non-essential sur surgery being cancelled across Glasgow today. All non-essential surgery has been cancelled, increasing waiting lists. Can the Cabinet Secretary please explain what he will do to address this crisis today? Cabinet Secretary. So, in terms of staffing, we have record levels of staffing in Scotland. Not only do we have record levels of staffing, we have, of course, the best paid NHS staff here uh, than anywhere else in the UK. Uh, these are difficult decisions being made by NHS boards right up and down the country. Not decisions made uh, easily or uh, light, lightly. They are decisions uh, that are being, that are difficult decisions that are having to be made in order to make sure that we can provide the urgent care that is absolutely necessary. And we have, of course, uh, still uh, large numbers of people in our hospitals with COVID-19. Over 800 uh, are currently in our hospitals with COVID-19 at the moment, at a time when our NHS is remobilising. So what will we do? We have, uh, of course, launched our NHS recovery plan, which looks to increase the capacity by 10%. Uh, I can hear one of the Conservative members shout out flimsy. Uh, not so flimsy, because your own party has copied, of course, that 10% uh, target. That is backed by £1 billion worth of investment. So we will invest, and that, of course, £1 billion is £400 million more than the Conservatives have committed. So we will make that investment. But let's, again, not take the public for fools. It will take time to recover and remobilise our NHS, particularly as we are still in the midst of a global pandemic. Paul O'Kane. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Dr John Thompson, Vice President in Scotland of the Royal College of Emergency Medicine, said in July that, and I quote, emergency medicine workforce in Scotland is not adequately staffed to deliver the highest quality patient care. This has led to an increase in intense pressures on the existing workforce and is very likely to be a contributing factor to the continued deterioration in performance. He went on to say that before the pandemic, increased demand was putting pressure on staff and it was a struggle to meet the four-hour target. With any pressures in summer resembling those of midwinter, with the NHS recovery plan being met with scepticism by the BMA and the RCN, and with the worst waiting times since records began when this government took office, isn't it time that the Cabinet Secretary stopped denying that this is a crisis, acknowledged that it has been on this government's watch, and started listening to the very serious and real concerns of those who know best, the doctors, nurses and workers on the front line? Cabinet Secretary. 
Secretary. And what's so disappointing again from Paul O'Kane is no acknowledgement at all that there has been the biggest shock in the NHS entire 73 year history. In the entire 73 year history there has been a, not a shock like this to the system. So we are proud of our record of making sure we have the best paid NHS staff here in Scotland compared to any other UK nation, the best terms and condition, and we have record staffing levels under this SNP Can we hear government. the Cabinet so, Secretary, please? So we will like continue, to hear the Cabinet Secretary. So we will continue to invest, we will continue to make sure staffing levels are high, and we will continue to make sure that staff is paid the best uh, than anywhere else uh, in the entire UK. Thank you. That concludes the urgent question.